Aleluya. The name of Jesus. Let me read something to you from the book of Micah. Ever heard of Micah? Some say Micah. Whatever it is, if it sounds that way, just go there. I want to read to you from chapter number four, Micah chapter number four. Oh, glory. I want y'all to read verse five. I don't know what you're saying. Can you try to read it again? One, two, go. Four. Did you see that? For all people will walk everyone in the name of his God. For all people will walk everyone in the name of his God. And we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. So whether or not you know it, you're walking in the name of your God. <laughs> the problem with many Christians is they have not identified themselves. God is saying to them, Everybody's working in the name of his God. What's the matter with you? You ought to work in the name of your God. They are working in the name of their God. Read it again. Hallelujah. Everyone will walk in the name of his God. It says, but we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. Walking in the name of your God. That's what, that's what uh, Paul was talking about. We'll come to it. Would you turn to St. John's Gospel, chapter number 15, and read verse 5 to me? St. John, chapter 15, read verse 5. said <laughs> I am the vine ye are the branches you know we can read that line alone and go out and be victorious and be successful at everything and anything any day and every day, all through life, just that line is enough for me to be victorious. Look at it again. Look at it. What a powerful truth. Do you meditate on the scriptures? Do you meditate? We're supposed to meditate, not just read. We're supposed to meditate. If you don't meditate, it, it, it can get deep into your spirit. Let's look at it. I am the vine. Jesus is talking. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. 
I am the vine, ye are the branches. He's, he's the stem of that plant. And we are the branches. The life is coming through the stem to the branches. The branches don't support the stem. The stem supports the branches. All right? And it's the same life that's coming through the stem that's going into the branches. And the branches are the fruit-bearing parts of the plant. They bear the fruit, not the stem. The branches. That's why when you talk about the fruit of the Spirit, you're not talking about the fruit of the Holy Ghost, you're talking about the fruit of the recreated human spirit. The born-again human spirit. Jesus says, I am the vine, Ye are the branches. That's so powerful. That's so powerful. See, there are different truths that we need to understand. Different truths in the Word of God. And we need to know when you have a greater truth. There's a lesser truth and there's a greater truth. Like you talk about light. A lesser light and a greater light for example when we say we are the ambassadors of Christ that's a big truth I'm his representative that's a big truth but when I read I'm the vine the other branches that's a greater truth it's wonderful to be his representative I didn't have to have the same life with him to be his representative. The prophets one time were his representatives. Anybody that he sent for something would be his representative. But when he says, I am the vine, ye are the branches, oh my goodness. That's talking about something high class. It's another level. He's saying, listen, we are one. And, and, I, and I'm thinking, yeah, we are one. Um, that's right. Together, right? He said, uh-uh. I don't mean we are together. There's something more than that. Uh, um, all right, we are friends, right? Yeah, but, but there's something more. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, um, Jesus is my elder brother. Mm -mm -mm. He says, that's not what I'm talking about. I said, Lord, so what are you talking about? He's talking of a oneness that's beyond all of those definitions. Are you hearing me? There's a oneness that's beyond all of those definitions. Now, he said it in his description of his relationship with the Father. He said, don't you believe that the Father is in me and I in him? I am in the Father and the Father is in me. I am in the Father and the Father is in me. There was a oneness in his relationship to the Father that the Jews couldn't understand. Moses never said that about God. Joshua never said that about God. <laughs> Not even the big friend of God, Abraham, said that about God. Don't you understand? That's, that's one reason when I say, well, there's a lot of these guys, you know, talking about uh, covenant and uh, thank God for covenant. I have studied about covenant. I know about covenant. All the covenants of the Bible. I know. I understand that. We talk about covenants. I understand that. And that we are in covenant with God. I understand all of that talk about covenant. It's a lesser truth. Do you understand? It's a lesser truth. 
The covenant brought us into being. You see, so it's not true that we are in covenant with God or in covenant with Jesus. We're not. That's the reality. It was that covenant that brought us into being. Because of the covenant, the new creation became possible. You see, the new creation is not in covenant with God or Jesus. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You see, it's so important. It's a, that's why I said there are different levels of truths. Like this one. When Jesus said, I'm the vine, he had the branches. They're looking at him. These were his last teachings before the crucifixion. They're looking at him. What is he saying? They didn't understand. There are some teachings, there are things that uh, John brought out. You, you don't find this in Matthew. You don't find it in Mark. You don't find it in Luke. Three writers, and none of them said anything about this oneness that John talks about. Where were they? How come they didn't hear it? If it was common knowledge in the day of the disciples, before the death and resurrection of Jesus, how come none of them said anything about it? Look at, study John, in St. John's Gospel, chapter 1, he says some mind-blowing things. But as many as received him, to them he gave power. That's chapter, chapter 1 verse 12. To become the sons of God, which were born. Not of blood. Now he comes into another level and, and all of the other writers don't even have the suggestion. The other writers majored on when he broke the bread and he said, take it, this is my body. You know, they, they majored on that. They were covenant thinkers. You're getting it now. Now this guy comes over here. He's not thinking covenant, he's thinking life. Hallelujah. Something beautiful. I am the vine, ye are the branches. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He's not saying I'm your representative. He said, I'm one with you. Oh, now I see. Now I see. Now I see. No wonder. Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. Give I thee. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. I'll never be sick in my life. <laughs> Hallelujah. When I was ignorant, I got sick. But I found out God's word. I'll never be sick again in my life. Hallelujah. Never. How could I? He's the vine. I am the branch. Oh, come on here. Got the same life. How could I have an infection? It's impossible. When I didn't know, I had an infection. When I didn't know, I got sick. When I didn't know, I was sleeping there, weak. And they said, what happened to you? I'm sick, malaria. Yeah, 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 yeah. I found the truth. Glory to God. I found the truth. It was a lie back then. I didn't know. So Satan put it on me because I didn't know. 
But now I know. Now I know. Hallelujah. Now I know. No wonder Jesus said, in my name, they shall cast out devils. Cast out devils. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. That he might what? Destroy. Destroy the works of the devil. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested in me. That he might destroy, paralyze the works of the devil. Now he says, I'm the custodian of this body. I'll never be defeated in my life. Because he stands up tall in me. See, it doesn't matter what you face in life. John understood this. He said, ye are of God, little children, and ye have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now look at Paul. Come. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Ha, <laughs> ha, glory. Hi, 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 hi. That's why James said, count it all joy. Count it all joy. All right. Colossians chapter 3. Have you seen it? Verse 17. And I want you all to read to me. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatsoever you do. He says, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Do all in the name, in the name, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh. Oh, I see. Why? Because you're in him. You see. You're born in him. He says, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. We are one. So much one that we have the same name. Hallelujah. Look at Philippians chapter 4. Let me show you something. Can you read it for me? Philippians chapter 4 in verse number 13. Again. One more time. I can do. Okay. Now. Um, I know that most of us are acquainted with that King James translation. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Accurate translation. But the word translated through 
through that you have there is the Greek word N. It's spelled E N. All right? It means through, it means in, I in, in English. So you can read it. I can do all things in Christ. You see that? In Christ. Now, actually, if you read that in the Amplified Version, read it for me in the Amplified Version. The Revised Version actually also says the same thing. But I'd like you, I know most of you wouldn't have the Revised Version, but read for me the Amplified Version, Amplified Translation. You got one there. All right. Verse 13 says, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. Did you see that? For all things in Christ who empowers me. Says, I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. Infuses inner strength into me. Says, I am self sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. You know, what a mentality. Think about it. Think about you every day. Every day you have this idea. You know, life is different for different people. You, there are those who see all the gloom and doom in life, you know, the everything is dark they always talk about the problems of the world some people are troubled by the government they're all every every time they think about the government they're angry to them life looks dark so when you sing a song like arise shine for the light is come the glory of the lord is risen it's like what what do you mean the glory of the lord they can't see the glory. Thy light is come. They can't see that. They're full of worry. Say, are you saying we shouldn't just understand there are problems? Can we, are we going to ignore the problems? No, no, a thousand times no. I didn't say ignore the problems. I said use another light. <laughs> You're using the wrong light. Use another light. The word of God is light. You're not using that one. You're using a different light. You're using the light that the rest of the world has. So you're seeing the same thing they are seeing. Read your Bible. God said when, when he asked Lot and his family to flee Sodom. And the angels of God came to take them out. Can you imagine? The angels were there to help them. And they said, come on, let's flee from this place. God wants us to destroy it. The angels told them. So Lot and his family fled Sodom. And God said, don't look back. Sodom, the city of Sodom went up in flames. And the angel said, flee to the mountain. Don't look back. Now, Abraham was far off on the other side and he was looking at the very thing that God told Lot not to look. <laughs> Nothing happened to Abraham. He was looking at Sodom. God said, Lot, you don't look at Sodom. He and his family. You know the story. His wife looked back. And turned into a pillar of salt. She was destroyed. For looking. At what God said not to look. But Abraham was looking at the same thing. And nothing happened to him. Because he was seeing through the eyes of God. 
He saw through the eyes of faith. Hallelujah. The name, the wonderful name. That's what he called us to live by. He said, whatever you do, in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. And it's remarkable he didn't say, do it in the name of Jesus. He said, in the name of the Lord Jesus. He's telling you something. He's emphasizing to you the lordship of Jesus over everything. Your salvation came not because you confessed that Jesus is the Son of God. All right? But the understanding that if he's the Son of God, he's lord over your life. He's lord over your life. So he says, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Great. That means you understand his Lord over your life. Anybody can say anything. If he doesn't understand it, he'll lose it. Now he says, whatever you do, in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. On your own, you may not have the ability to do that thing. On your own, even though you have the ability to do it, it could fail. Are you hearing me? That's why there are people who are always failing and then they're asking for demons to be cast out of them. They say the spirit of failure. So I heard the other day some, some that said something about uh, the spirit of rising and falling. <laughs> it's called ignorance gone on rampage. The spirit of rising and falling. Is that a particular demon or what is it? I know what they're trying to describe is the experience that certain people are going through. You know, they go up and they come down. I understand that. But it doesn't mean there's a particular demon that's called rising and falling demon. From which you require to be delivered. And by the way, when Jesus Christ becomes Lord of a man's life, he does not need deliverance from any devil. I don't know when, maybe someday, how soon the church will get to understand that. That Satan has been defeated. He's not going to be defeated, he's already defeated. And that we are not going to be victorious, we are already victorious over the devil. Hallelujah. Stop trying to be what you already are. Hallelujah. See, your limitation as an individual, because most of you here have learned the truth. Is that right? Yes. And you're watching your life grow. And you're moving from one degree of glory to another. That's the truth. You're seeing yourself developing in Christ. You're seeing the beauty of God in your life. And in fact, a lot of you, people know you at work. They see now that there's a special kind of light in your life. It's a fact. I hear testimonies. I get to hear the reports. But there are few, maybe you're new, and you haven't understood what we're talking about. There is a mindset for the righteous. You understand? There's a mindset for the righteous. There's a way of thinking. I was sharing something with them in Benin. I hope you, you get the tapes. The, I was telling them there's a difference between, you see, the rich and the poor, they don't think alike. 
They don't think alike. Rich men have a way of thinking. Poor people have a way of thinking. They, 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 they got a problem. There's a way, there's a way they think that keeps them poor. Poor people, they have a way of thinking. Why are they like that? Now, if you're in this place and you have that way of thinking, I feel sorry for you. Because whenever you say something like that, they, get, they start getting irritated. You know, because it's, it's talking about poor, poor us. Uh -uh. Can somebody that is poor again not save God again? You ought to say, I refuse to be poor. <laughs> instead, of, instead of looking and saying, uh uh, does poor man not know God again? Can someone not be poor and be righteous? After all, the Bible says the rich cannot, it's impossible for the rich to get to the kingdom of God because it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle when jesus said it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle he was not talking about a sewing needle not a sewing needle it's a special kind of door that was more or less uh, a window of some kind, okay? By the city gate, you could only pass there one person at a time. And then when you got there and you had your, cow, uh, your camel with you, the camel would go through very difficult uh, experience coming through that window to enter the city because the main gates were already closed. That little door or door-like window or window-like door, whatever it was, that little opening was what was called the eye of a needle. Because of the difficulty of going through. Sometimes I understand they even had somebody from the other side even had to help you come in. So that's what he was talking about. And by the way, he was telling his disciples who believed they themselves were already rich. So when Jesus said to them, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to be saved, they were shocked. They looked at themselves and said, ah, who then can be saved? If we the rich guys cannot be saved. Listen. Peter was not a fisherman using a hook like you find on a Papa Express road. Come on! James and John were with their father, a heavy fishing businessman. They had servants. If they were here today, if their business were to be related to our, our day, you'd be talking about they had sheep loads. These guys were suppliers of fish. So don't think about one little poor guy. Who was Matthew? The Bible didn't call him a, 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 a tax collector's servant. He was a tax collector. A chief tax collector. Now when the guy, when the guy followed Jesus, he threw a party. You had to be rich to have a party. He threw a party. And his rich friends came. You know what the kind of disciples they were? No, some people just think about, you know, they, they imagine Jesus, you know, going like that in poverty. Uh, that's not the kind of man he was. Is it the son of a carpenter? Hi, your mind is on. Hey, 
hey, hey, uh, hey, that's the kind of carpenter you have in mind? <laughs> the word carpenter means a builder. Joseph was a heavy contractor. Listen, listen, listen. I've done my study. I'm trying to explain this thing to you. Joseph was a descendant of David. He was royalty. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was also a descendant of David. She was royalty. If it were today, they would call him Prince Joseph. Do you understand? He was royalty. He said there was no place in the inn for Jesus to be born. That was because they were traveling. Didn't you read it? It was not in his house that there was... Listen, when the, when the innkeeper had no place for them and put them in a stable and Jesus was born there, he didn't live there. Shortly after he was born, he was removed from there. The wise men who came to visit Jesus with his, uh, with his parents didn't meet him at the stable. The Bible says they met him in their house. House. <laughs> hold on, hold on. When Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, he stopped somewhere and um, they didn't prepare for him. You remember he was, he was organizing a crusade. And then some people came and they thought Jesus was angry. Some people came and said, Master, we would follow you. And Jesus said, relax, foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Why? Because he was on a journey. There was no place for him. Because the disciples there, the people there, didn't prepare for his coming. And James, uh, James and John were angry. They said, Master, let's come and fire out of heaven even as Elijah did. Jesus said, what? <laughs> That was the place Jesus said the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. He was talking about to lay his head for the night. Now, in Capernaum, Jesus had a house. He had a house in Capernaum. Study your Bible. That place where we are told that the brother man who was sick of the palsy, four of his friends brought him when Jesus was teaching in the house. That was Jesus' house. It was his house. The Bible says he relocated from Nazareth to Capernaum. So he had a house in Capernaum. The Bible says he was in the house. So when you hear a lot of teaching by so many, you know, a lot of people say all kinds of things about Jesus, they forget that this man was supposed to be a physical descendant of King David. What are you talking about? It was a, a, a royal lineage. These were not poor people. God is not a celebrant of poverty. He ain't going to make anybody poor. He said he came to preach the gospel to the poor. What is gospel to the poor? Good news to the poor. Hey, poor, you are no longer poor. I have given you an inheritance. That's the meaning of the gospel. He came to change their state and their estate. Don't let anybody deceive you with the message of poverty. I, I'm not a prosperity teacher or preacher. I'm, I preach Christ. You know, they say I'm a, the, this Pastor Chris preaches healing. I don't preach healing. Uh, he preaches prosperity. I don't preach prosperity. I preach Jesus Christ. And you cannot truly preach Jesus Christ without making many rich. Hallelujah. You can't preach him without people getting here. Yes. 
Hallelujah. Look what we're talking about again. Living in the name of Jesus. That'll make me a success. He says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. Hey, 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 could it be better than that? Whatsoever you do, in word or deed, do it in the name. Hi, that means I run my business in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Do you have a shop? You are the shop owner in the name of Jesus. You are selling in the name of Jesus. Okay, how else can you explain it? Somebody says, well, that's not exactly what it means. What do you mean by whatsoever you do in words or in deeds? Don't you understand? In the Amplified it says, whatever it is. No matter what it is. You're reading something just now in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. It says, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens, empowers, enables me. I can. And so I, 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 I give myself a mindset through the word of God what mindset does he want me to have the mindset or what we call an I can do mentality I can't think like I can't do it I can I can I can I can so he says meditate so I meditate I can do all things through Christ which energizes me I can do all things through Christ who anoints me i can do all things in christ who empowers me i'm in christ i am in christ christ is in me hallelujah one divine creation i'm not an ordinary man anymore one divine creation he that is joined to the lord is one spirit i am one spirit with him i'll never be a failure glory to god i'm a success hallelujah how can you think like this and be a failure or be poor or be sick it's not possible so when I find people who are on the other side of the street who live on the other side of town I know what they've been listening to I know what they've been listening to you've been listening to the wrong thing so you're coming up wrong you're growing up wrong you that means you're that fellow who who has always believed I'm from an average family my name is John Smith and my father was poor my mother was poor my grandfather was poor I am poor I'm average okay that's because that's what you were taught that's what you were taught so you're coming up like that you're growing up with that mentality anybody you see that you think is rich you say he's a thief he's a thief yeah. every rich person you see is a thief because how could anybody have anything more than what you have if they don't steal and since you can't get it nobody else ought to be able to get it you're wrong change your thinking the Bible says to renew your mind change your thinking hallelujah I'm a helper I'm a lifter of others I'm gonna help the poor I'm gonna help the poor I'm gonna heal the sick I'm gonna raise others up I'm going to bless others. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mine oh mine. Think about having that kind of mentality every day. I'm going to help the poor. Make up your mind. That's what you're going to do. You're going to help the poor. Hallelujah. Good things are coming my way. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, when you're going out, when you're going out, you say, I go in the name of Jesus. Can I tell you something? 
I never go out except I've said those words. I don't just carry things and go. Just enter the car and go. I don't do that. It might be, I might want to go from here, maybe to the other road over there. I say, I go in the name of Jesus. I, I have that consciousness in my spirit. I bring it forth, I breathe it out. I never come among people except I do that. Whether formally or informally. If I'm going to go through them, come in among them, close to them, or talk to them, whichever the case. Lord, I go in there in the name of Jesus. I may not say it out for you to hear me. But I say it. I've got to. Because there's a difference between your closet and when you're out there. So many Christians are not conscious of these things. And yet the Bible tells us, whatever you do in word or deed, So learn it now. Hallelujah. Put it into your life. Learn it now. And start practicing it until you master it. Until you master it and you breathe it. You find the glory of God will be evidently on your life. Morning, noon, and night. Hallelujah to Jesus. Lift your hands toward heaven and worship him. Hallelujah.